hey my loves welcome back to my channel i hope you are all having a cheaper thursday coming at you today with a different hairstyle i guess this is like a 4c you know twa wash and go what do you guys think you know i prefer the other hairstyle to be honest but my moms and some of my friends are adamant that i look better with this one so i thought i would let you guys be the judge of that okay so in the comment section down below let me know what do you think you know do you think i look better with this hairstyle or with the other one anyways in this one i wanted to discuss cosmetic surgery as you guys know i have had a nose job and i wanted to tell you why i didn't go for dr bora okay or dr taskin for the surgery you know a lot of american black women are going to turkey to get the job done and also i wanted to let you know things that happened you know post surgery that i did not anticipate that i didn't know nothing about so you know you can get ready for your plastic surgery journey so you know you're not blindsided like i was and the first thing that i did not expect to happen is you know that it would be an extremely emotional journey like obviously you know i knew that a journey like this is going to be a little bit emotional but i guess at the time i was so hyper focused on wanting the surgery done i was so hyper focused on the fact that you know i need this to happen i've been manifesting this ever since i was eight years old i've been wanting this you know for 15 years that i did not think of how emotionally it would affect me i remember having a mental breakdown pre-surgery you know my friend maria is my witness you know i cut like the middle of my hair like all of it off and back then you know i had pretty long hair my hair was armpit length back then you know a day where i was having a meltdown in my former bathroom and even post-surgery i remember you know one thing that i didn't do in the process of you know getting ready for my plastic surgery journey is look for too much uh, information pertaining like the surgery itself i did look for a lot of informations like i did do a lot of research for my surgery which i recommend okay but i didn't look too much like i didn't look at videos of rhinoplasty being performed because i knew that that would freak me out and i knew that i couldn't like push through that so i didn't do that so even though i knew that you know it is possible to have an even nostril one thing that i didn't know is that you are bound to have a wound inside you know your nose if you have open rhinoplasty and i didn't know that i guess that happens from you know my surgeon did file uh my bridge and you know he did lift my tip initially he wanted to take a uh, bone from uh behind my ears to put it in there which i'm glad he didn't do because i think my nose would look so fake if he had done that but you know what he decided to do at the end is take some of the bone that he filed you know that he cut from my bridge to put it on the tip of my nose you know that way my body won't reject it and everything you know until now at least you know i'm about three years post up everything is well knock on wood you know okay <laughs> and yeah so i didn't know that i would have a wound inside of my nose and i remember freaking out okay this is probably you know i don't know maybe two days post surgery or something i remember i saw this and i freaked out also another thing that happened and, you know i had a ablaplasty is it called ablaplasty i'm not sure but i'm going to write it down on screen that is when you know your surgeon take in your nostrils like he didn't uh reduce them i think but you know he did take them in because they were a little bit flare before so and he had when he was removing the stitches which happened the day after uh, the surgery he forgot a small piece on here you can still see it like uh, if I'm not wearing any makeup you know like there is a small kiloid a super small kiloid on there but it doesn't bother me you know it is what it is but anyways you know that combined with the wound that I had inside of you know my nostril which is still there by the way I think it will forever be there like I freaked out and I remember you know it was just my luck obviously that day my surgeon was not in so I took an uber I got there and my surgeon was not there so you know but one of his uh, female colleague was there and I remember you know poor girl she tried her best to calm me down you know as much as humanly possible she told me you know to breathe and relax and that it was normal for you know people to experience this type of anxiety post up but i just didn't believe her you know i mean i did go home because i had no choice she did send me home but you know as i got home i was still very very freaked out i was doubtful oh my god you know now i totally ruined my face this was the wrong decision after all it was just really bad so i want to tell you you know no matter how much you seem to hate 
you know your nose now just know that this is going to be an extremely emotional journey it's going to take a tool out of you and it's going to be much harder like emotionally than you think it will okay another thing that i wish i knew is that i would miss my old face <laughs> as crazy as it sounds because i hate it you guys like with a passion it sounds crazy said like this but i hated my old nose with a passion my best friend agnes is my witness i used to talk every day about how you know i can't wait to get rid of it how it would make me the happiest woman in the world <laughs> like i just disliked it so much you guys like honestly i cannot emphasize this enough but what i find myself doing nowadays is looking at old pictures you know of myself and you know feel like oh i kind of miss you know the old me and i kind of miss my nose and what's super crazy is that you know nowadays looking at old pictures of myself i feel like there was nothing wrong with me <laughs> i mean i know that there was nothing wrong with me that there was nothing wrong with the way that i look but i also know that i only feel this way because i've had the surgery as crazy as you know contrary it's <laughs> intuitive as it may sound you know i know that you know that is what is happening i know that if i had kept my old nose i wouldn't feel this this way about it i wouldn't feel like it was beautiful that nothing was wrong with it that it was fine i think that one thing that does help you know cope with that is that i don't look too too different from before i'm going to include a before picture somewhere in this video and for me especially like from the front i don't look very different from before now i do look quite different like from the side you know but from the front i don't look too different so i think that that is one thing that does help me cope with missing my younger self now i want to get into you know friends and family members treating me differently as well as strangers but before i get into that i want to say that you know i come from senegal west africa i come from one of the poorest countries in the world 70 percent of senegalese population live with less than a dollar a day you know if you can paint that idea in your mind there is no no plastic surgery in senegal this is no ghana or nigeria i mean i heard that there is a guy that comes from you know morocco and that does uh intervention here and there you know women can write themselves on the list and then when he has enough patience he does come and do it but i'm not sure you know if that is real or if that is fake so i don't know but anyways uh you know for what i'm trying to say here is that for most of the senegalese population a no job is extremely far-fetched okay now in big cities like Dakar, of course women are starting you know to get hip to game and they go to turkey or you know france and the u.s to get uh procedures done but most of the time they get like boob jobs and you know tummy tucks and bbls you know i feel like something with the face is kind of taboo it's just the society is not quite there yet you know so it's very far-fetched this is important because you know after i got the surgery i went back on holiday and you know i was anxious you know i was anxious i was excited to see you know how my family would react to this how my cousins you know and other family members you know auntie uncles and stuff would react to the surgery and it was crickets you guys nothing okay i remember one cousin asked me you know did you get your nose done but most people were acting as if nothing had changed nothing happened <laughs> like i said i think part of this is because i don't look too different from before i think another element that could be happening here obviously is people not knowing how to act you know people not wanting to be rude i think that you know my sister told me that she told me they noticed but they don't want to say anything because like it's a weird thing to ask to someone so that may be true but i genuinely i legit believe that many of them just have not noticed that they cannot just think that far you know i think they notice that something about me is different but they can't pinpoint it they can't say okay it's a nose job it's a rhinoplasty and the reason why i say i think that some of them have noticed that something about me is different because they are treating me differently some of them are treating me differently they are nicer to me they invite me to stuff they you know give me gifts they pay for stuff for me which is stuff that they didn't used to do so i know that you know their relationship to me changed and this is why i love kimberly from for harriet you know she talks a lot about how the system of beauty is so pernicious you know how you know we know this we know the halo effect we know people tend to treat people who they perceive as attractive differently and i've definitely you know experienced something that some would call as pretty privileged with you know close relatives and family members you know post 
up you know they were like i said they are nicer to me they they can't pinpoint it some of them tell me oh you look so good you look so good but i guess they can't just pinpoint why <laughs> okay but i want to talk about this family member of mine who actually knew about the surgery you know shortly after the surgery happened i sent a picture to my mom you know i still had the cast on very scary and he oversaw it and then my mom had to tell him about it and this person yeah even though he knows that i've had the surgery done he still treats me differently and this is so odd to me and sometimes i want to shake him and ask him like are you not seeing what you're doing are you not realizing and i'm actually i honestly believe that he's not paying attention that even though he knows that i've had the surgery he's still not seeing how uh, that is affecting him how he's treating me differently again he's being nicer he's being you know so much more empathetic so much more caring so much more kind which is very very off and odd coming from him like really weird stuff you guys and so yeah prepare for people to treat you slightly differently you know strangers and friends and family member and for me personally i'm going to be very honest and say that i don't know how i feel about that that i am a tad bit resentful of that because Sometimes, you know, in the midst of people being so nice to me, I do think like, would you be like this? Would you act like this, you know, with my former self? If I hadn't had, you know, the surgery, would you still be this nice to me? So that does render me to be, you know, not bitter, but resentful at times, you know? <laughs> so that is, I feel conflicted about this because I feel like, you know, our younger selves live within us, you know? So I feel like my younger self feels some type of way about this and, you know, that, I feel also for other black women or other women you know around the world who would like to have the surgery but maybe cannot afford it so i feel like you know it's not fair that they are not being treated with you know i guess as nice as they could be treated if uh they didn't because they cannot afford the surgery that does upset me a bit at times you know even with strangers and i want to say you know strangers have always treated me like i guess normally you know like i was treated no bad no good just normally by strangers okay sometimes of course i was complimented on my height because you know i'm 5 11 on you know on my feet okay your girl can put a mean outfit together period okay but you know what i find that much more often you know strangers do compliment me like when i go to the beauty supply store out in the street the supermarket anywhere you know there's always this random person to come at me and say oh my god you're absolutely gorgeous and you know of course i say thank you and i smile and stuff like that but again deep down inside i do feel like some type of way about it and i'm kind of like it's a bittersweet feeling i mean on one end i am you know happy about it i don't care what anyone say we all enjoy you know validation reassurance you know self-esteem doesn't exist in a vacuum obviously you know some of our self a lot of it ideally you know comes from our internal logos of control but some of our self-esteem does come from reassurance from other people it is what it is you know don't argue with me go argue with your mom <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah i do appreciate it but at the same token i feel like hmm you know would you be doing this you know like five years ago i don't know you know it because it did happen also sometimes five years ago so it's hard for me to be able to tell exactly you know how i feel about it um another thing that i didn't anticipate that would happen post-surgery and oh on that subject actually i also want to say that you know some people we say it's your confidence it's because of confidence that it's because you are so much more confident now sorry that people are you know complimenting you and stuff like that it's your aura i have had many times friends tell me this argue me down on this and even if it was i have said this in the video that i done previously about my uh, plastic surgery i'm still going to accredit it to the nose job because like this confident like a lot of it came from finally getting plastic surgery like from i wanted the surgery and once i got it like a lot of you know the confidence came from that you know so i'm still gonna accredit it to that it may be the confidence but the confidence came from the procedure you know if i hadn't had the procedure i'm not sure that i would be as confident as i am today so you know i've said this before in the other video i wouldn't be filming this video for sure if i haven't had you know the surgery because i just hate it okay i hate it how i looked on pictures i say this you know i didn't mind my nose like in real life i didn't think it looked bad but baby once someone took a picture of me or I tried to took a selfie and you know i know that you know selfies make your nose look i don't know 20 or 30 percent bigger than it actually is or something like that but i just hated it okay it is what it is you guys i'm not saying i'm perfect but i just hated it okay 
I'm not saying anyone go out there and get plastic surgery by the way this is not a video of me making the apology of plastic surgery I'm just sharing my experience and you know my experience is valid and maybe there are women out there who can you know learn something from whatever it is I'm sharing like I was saying uh, I also wanted to touch on why I did not travel abroad why I didn't go to Dr. Boro okay or Dr. Taskin in order to get the surgery and the reason why I did not do that is because like um I just wanted the surgery to happen in Germany because I'm insured here because my daughter lives here because I have friends here and um I just I mean I did contact Dr. Bora not Dr. Taskin you know I did contact Dr. Bora and you know he did quote me a price that was cheaper than the one that I ended up paying in Germany but for me it was just important to have it done here it was important that if something happened God forbid like I told you you know I had a breakdown two days uh, post-op and I had to go back to where I done the surgery which was only like 25 minutes from my home if it had been to Turkey like of course if it's two days post-op I would still be in Turkey but if I had come back to Germany and something had happened happen I would have to take a plane again and go back you know and show the surgeon and stuff and I just I was iffy about that you know for me it was important to see my daughter you know before the surgery so that you know go forbid if that is the last time that I had to see her you know I would know okay I saw my daughter on the last day you know it was just important to have my friends and family members and loved one around me I just didn't want to risk going abroad I you know I'm insured here if something had gone south I could go to a hospital and you know it would be for free like whatever they did post up but you know that wouldn't be the case in Turkey for example maybe I would have to pay if something had happened and for me I just didn't want that that's too risky too scary for me but you know for those of you guys who are planning on doing that I hope all goes well I find Dr. Bora's work to be you know astonishing I think it's very very beautiful it's very natural looking you know I'm not a big fan I personally of Dr. Taskin's work I find that you know a lot of his noses look the same but you know if you like that if that's what you're looking for then that's fine you know we are different people with different tastes and everything is okay so yeah anyways you guys i can make a part two because this video is getting too too long you know if you enjoyed it and want me to film part two then don't forget to give it a thumbs up in the comment section down below let me know you know what are your thoughts about cosmetic surgery are you trying to get a nose job have you already gotten one do you find that your friends associate family member treat you differently post up or not and yeah I'll be looking forward to talking to you hopefully very, very soon. Bye, guys. Mwah.